This is question 23 from the 2008 calculator paper. Here we are asked to rearrange this form, this equation here um, to give 3x squared plus 7x minus 13. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this x minus 1, I'm going to multiply both sides by x minus 1 to get rid of the fraction there. So that's going to give me 5 <coughs> bracket x minus 1, so 5 times x minus 1 divided by x plus 2 and that is equal to that's equal to 4 minus 3x so that's equal to 4 minus 3x so by multiplying by x minus 1 I've got rid of that as a fraction now I'm just going to do exactly the same with this fraction here so I've got divide by x plus 2 so times both sides to cancel out that divide by x plus 2 so times in both sides by x plus 2 that's going to give me 5 bracket x minus 1 and is equal to 4 minus 3x multiplied by x plus 2. Right, that's got rid of the fractions involved. Now, what I want to do really, I think it's probably a good idea to expand, so that's what I'll do. So expanding the brackets, that gives me 5x minus 5 is equal to, and these look a little trickier, so let's just do um, however you want to do it. 4 times by x gives you 4x. Negative 3x multiplied by 2, that's going to give you negative 6x. Then negative 3x multiplied by x is going to give me minus 3x squared. And then 4 multiplied by 2 that's going to give me 8. <clears throat> so from this point on this is starting to look a little bit more like what I need. Now the only thing I need everything to equal 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all of these terms over here so all of the terms that are on the right hand side I'm just going to bring them over to this side of the equal sign. So when I do that what I end up with is negative 4x plus 6x plus 3x squared um, and then minus 8 plus 5x minus 5 and that's going to give me an expression that is equal to 0 so it gives me an equation now next all that I'm going to have to do is tidy this up and hopefully when I tidy this up it will give me this equation here so let's see <clears throat> so how many uh, are there any other x squareds that I can collect together no there aren't so it's just 3x squared then let's take a look at my x terms and it's probably helpful actually to kind of cross these out as we go so let's cross out that plus 3x squared we've dealt with that part then let's collect the x terms together. I've got plus 6x minus 4x, that gives me 2x, plus 5x, that gives me plus 7x. So I've dealt with all of the x terms. And then what am I left with? I'm left with negative 8 and negative 5, so that gives me minus 13 equal to 0. Now is that what I started with? 3x squared plus 7x minus 13, yes it is, so there we go. Now part 2, or part B, asks you to solve 3x squared plus 7x minus 13 is equal to 0. Give your solutions correct to two decimal places. Now, the big, big thing here is this phrase here. This gives you a big clue that you are supposed to use the quadratic equation, um, the, for, the quadratic formula to solve this equation. So give your solutions correct to two decimal places. You're not expect, being expected to answer this by trying to factorise it or anything like that. The fact that it says two decimal places or it might say three significant figures or whatever means that you're going to use the formula which I have um, copied from the formula page at the front which is here. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So 
let's start doing that. So we can say that a is the coefficient for our x squared, b is the coefficient for our x's, and c is that number on the end. So now putting each of these numbers into this formula, what I end up with is minus b, so plus 7, so that's going to be minus 7 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 7 squared, minus 4ac, so minus, I'm going to put this bit in brackets, minus 4 times the a, which is 3, 4 times 3 times by c, which is negative 13. divided by 2a, a is 6, so 2 times 3. Now what I would suggest doing, before trying, instead of trying to plug all of this into your calculator at the same time, break it down so it's a little bit easier to work out. Um, so let's start evaluating some of this so that we've got consistent values and then we can, then we can start working it out. So first of all, 7 squared, let's say that that is 49. So let's call that 49 instead. And then we've got 4 times 3 times negative 13. So uh, 12 times by negative 13, that's going to give me um, minus 156. So then <coughs> what I'm saying then is let's, and then instead of saying this is 2 times 3, let's call that 6. So what I've got is I've got negative 7 plus the square root of, and then I've got 49 minus minus 156, so I could say that that is the square root of, so 49 minus minus, that makes it a plus, so that's going to give me the square root of 205, divided by 6, that's going to give me one of my answers. And then my other answer is going to be negative 7 minus the square root of 205 divided by 6. That's going to give me my other answer. So just writing out the plus minus into two different solutions. Now if I put this into my calculator, so I've got negative 7 plus the square root of 205 that gives me 7.31 divided by 6 and that gives me one of my answers is going to be 1.21 it says give my answer correct to two decimal places so that's 1.22 now if I just do exactly the same as I did a moment ago um, so negative 7 minus, so the only change I'm making is instead of having a plus, I'm having a minus. Minus 7 minus the square root of 205 divided by 6. And that gives me an answer of negative 3.5529, etc. Give your solution correct to two decimal places. So to two decimal places, my answer is going to be negative 3.55. And so just as I said, just a quick recap, I find it's helpful to, instead of trying to put this all into your calculator, especially if you're using an older calculator like the one I am, it's helpful to just evaluate some of this stuff. Now I did a lot of this in my head, and I would suggest not doing that, but using your calculator to work out individual parts, so you've got a nice easy, um, nice, easy numbers just to put in right at the end of your calculations to give you your two answers for x.